In the last video, we took a close look at some of the interesting islands of the Strait of Hormuz, specifically the islands of Abu Musa, Kashem, and Hormuz. In this video, I am picking up the alignment in Bandar i Abbas, Iran, and following it to the city of Mazar i Sharif in Afghanistan. I am following an alignment that originates from and ends on Amsterdam Island, one of the French subantarctic islands. My name is Michelle Gibson. In this series, I am sharing what I found by connecting the cities and places that form a large circle. Amsterdam Island is a tiny dot in the South Indian Ocean. Bandar-e-Abbas is a port city and the capital of Hormuzgan province. It is modern Iran's most important port with 75% of Iran's sea trade passing through here. Its previous name, with different pronunciations and spellings in different languages, was Gombrun. The most important port in ancient Iran was the nearby Hormuz city. In 1497, five years after the New Falls historical timeline was superimposed onto the original positive timeline in 1492, for what I'm talking about, see my video, an explanation for what happened to the positive timeline of humanity and associated historical events and anomalies. Europeans landed in the region for the first time in the form of the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama. Nine years later, in 1508, the European invasion began with the Portuguese sending seven warships to protect their interests there. This is an etching showing what Hormuz city looked like in 1522. Old Hormuz or Ormus was located where the city of Minab is today. I remember reading somewhere that there is a cult or esoteric significance to the name of Ormus, but it is not the scope of this video to delve into it. It is yet another point of information and the piecing together of this puzzle that has many missing pieces. Here are some photos of ancient infrastructure in and around Minab. Contrary to what we've been taught by historical omission, these are not natural features. My videos are filled with examples of why I say this. However, I would recommend watching my video, Natural Features or Intelligently Designed Ancient Infrastructure. This is my dedicated video for why I say this. Hormuzgan province, of which Bandar i Abbas is a part, has 13 major cities and 13 counties. The people of this region are called Bandari. This province is also known as Iran's Black South. The flavor of the traditional ceremonies and music in this part of Iran is considered African, but the people are called descendants of African slaves and merchants. I would like to point out another explanation which is that these people are indigenous to this land. There are a lot of really big secrets out there that have not been told to humanity. I think this is the biggest because everything happening in our world is related to this truth being withheld and distorted. There is a Hindu temple in Bandar i Abbas said to have been built in 1892. Notice anything unusual in this picture? At the very least, the dome of this building, and perhaps more, has monolithic characteristics. That is, it looks like it was carved from a single block of stone. I see cracks in the foreground, but not sections. Even if it is made from another building material, how did they do it, according to the history that we have been taught? What technology did they have to accomplish that so perfectly in 1892? There is so much we have not been taught about the true history of the planet including how Hinduism and Buddhism, for that matter, connect back into the advanced ancient civilization, and that all of this is not mutually exclusive, as we have been taught to believe. More on this later in the video. Moving along the circle alignment from bandar e Abbas, we find the city of Kerman, the capital of Iran's Kerman province. It is one of Iran's oldest cities. This is arg e -Bam Castle, or Bam Citadel in Kerman province. It is called the largest adobe building in the world and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site believed to go back to the 6th century BC. An earthquake in 2003 destroyed much of it. Compare it in style to the Grand Mosque of Djene in Mali, also an example of adobe architecture. Djene is not far from the home of the Dogon, Bandiagara Escarpment with its adobe dwellings. 
which just happens to look a lot like Mesa Verde in Colorado. This is Ichan Kala, the inner walled town of Kiva in Uzbekistan. It has been a World Heritage Site since 1990. And before I move on from adobe structures, I just want to share the astonishing similarity in appearance between the adobe buildings of Eight bin Hadou in Morocco's Brzezadi province in the top photo, and this view of what would be considered more modern constructions in the city of Santa Cruz de Tenerife in the Canary Islands. This is the Bazar e Sartasari in the city of Kerman, one of the oldest trading centers in Iran. Compared with Fort Pulaski in the U.S. state of Georgia on Tybee Island near Savannah, Georgia, and Fort Jefferson on Dry Tortuga State Park west of Key West, Florida, and not accessible by land, I think these so-called Civil War era forts in the United States were repurposed from their original uses. In other words, they were pre-existing buildings that were converted for military use. Next in Kerman is the Hammam i Ganjali, a historic bathhouse said to have been built in 1631. It is now a museum. Note the monolithic stone columns and the stylized vaulting in the design of the roof. Same idea with the Hammam i Bakal, a bath in the same complex that has been converted into a tea house. Leaving Kerman, next on the alignment, we come to the lakes of Hamun, which are on the border of Iran and Afghanistan. Hamun is a group of reservoirs. In my video on chimney rocks and man-made lakes, I give a detailed opinion on what that is all about. Creating reservoirs is how ancient infrastructure is covered up. In Iran, Lake Hamun is a UNESCO protected biosphere reserve. Mount Kajan is described as a flat-topped basalt mountain, like it's natural that turns into a seasonal island during the rainy season in the middle of Lake Hamun in Iran. Rostam Castle is located on Mount Kajen, the ruins of a citadel complex. It is an important archaeological site. This area was also part of a southern branch of the Great Silk Road, part of an ancient network of trade routes that connected east and west. Within the remains of the complex, there is a Zoroastrian fire temple. Not only that, in legend, Lake Hamun is considered to be the keeper of Zoroaster's seed. This means Zoroastrians believe that when the final renovation of the world is near, maidens will enter the lake and give birth to the Saoshans, the saviors of mankind. Next on the alignment, we come to Farah in Afghanistan. It is part of the sparsely populated Farah province, which is mostly comprised of rural tribal groups. This region is heavily affected by the ongoing hot conflicts in Afghanistan. I will be focusing mostly on past history, not present, for the purposes of this video. This is the citadel of Farah, said to have been built as part of a network of fortresses by Alexander the Great when the history books tell us he took possession of the land in 330 BC. To be clear, I am not saying that I believe this is when it was actually built. The city of Farah is believed to be over 3,000 years old and one of the ancient places of the Persian kings. This is called the Farah Mubarak Madhavia on the outskirts of Farah city. It is a major pilgrimage site for Muslims. The population of Farah province is predominantly Pashtun, also known as Pathan. The Pashtun are a tribal nation of millions of Afghani and Pakistani Muslims who have a strong oral tradition that they are descendants of lost tribes of Israel, and they refer to themselves as Bani Israel. Here's an example of a Pashtun textile piece. Here are examples of traditional Afghani clothing for men and women. Farah also belongs culturally and historically to Sistan province in Iran and the Greater Khorasan, which is a region lying in the northeast part of the historical Persian Empire. Next on the alignment is Mazar-e-Sharif, Afghanistan. It is the third largest city in Afghanistan and the capital of the Balkh province. This region is also part of the Greater Khorasan of the historical Persian Empire. 
The city has been spared the devastation of war that has occurred in other parts of Afghanistan and is considered one of the safest cities in the country. This is the Blue Mosque in the center of the city. The Blue Mosque is also notable for the white pigeons that congregate in its courtyard. This is the citadel in the ancient city of Balkh. Balkh was a center of Zoroastrianism in northern Afghanistan. It is a short distance northwest of Mazar-e-Sharif. It was known as Bactra, the capital of ancient Bactria. Our history books convey that Alexander the Great captured the city in 330 BC and the hordes of Genghis Khan completely destroyed it in 1220 AD. Hmm, something about this particular place attracts major attention. The Hindu Kush is just south of Balkh. There are many who believe that there is a connection between Balkh, the Hindu Kush, and Shambhala. Zoroastrians, for example, identify the Hindu Kush as the High Hara, or the geographic center of the universe around which the stars and the planets revolve and the home of the masters of the heart. There is a strong history of Buddhism in this part of the world as well. In Balkh, there are stupas over the remains of the first lay disciples of the Buddha, Trapusa and Bahalika. The city is said to have derived its name from Bahalika. This Buddhist stupa near Balkh sits on top of the takht e rustam the throne of the hero of the world. I'm going to end this video in the Bamiyan Valley of Afghanistan, which is not directly on this alignment. It is south of Mazar-e-Sharif in central Afghanistan, not far from Kabul, the country's capital. There were two colossal statues of Buddha there, carved into the sandstone. Both statues were destroyed by the Taliban in 2001. I firmly believe there would be no mysteries in history if we had been taught the true history about an ancient advanced civilization that was all about harmony, balance, beauty, sacred geometry, and unity with each other and the universe, and connecting with one's higher self. This is a poignant example of how dark forces are hell-bent on physically destroying this civilization and its memory and legacy. Actually, they have been hell-bent on destroying all civilization, but this particular one was the fullest expression of human potential that there ever was on Earth. I will pick up the circle alignment in Dushanbe, Tajikistan in my next video.